I pray that the Lord will locate you in the prophetic meeting of this morning. Amen. Say this loud and clear. My problems. My problems. Commit, suicide. Commit suicide. Can I hear you shouting that loud and clear? Is that the loudest you can shout it? Now you are going to add something to it. My problems. Commit suicide. By the power. In the blood of Jesus. Say it loud and clear. Let your voice roll like thunder. That's our topic. My problems commit suicide. In Jeremiah chapter 17. Jeremiah chapter 17. There is a strange expression there which I need to explain a little bit further. Jeremiah 17, 18. It will be good for you to open to that place. Because I want you to read it loud and clear too. Jeremiah chapter 17 verse 18 is one of the most powerful confessions in scripture. Jeremiah 17 18. Are we there? Are we ready? Let's read it loud and clear. Let them be confounded that persecute me. But let not me be confounded. Let them be dismayed. But let not me be dismayed. Bring upon them the day of evil and destroy them with how many destruction? Double. What does the Bible mean by double destruction? One would have thought that one destruction is good enough. I said double. Let's look at a sample in the Bible of double destruction. In Second Chronicles chapter 20, the king was in trouble. Jehoshaphat was in trouble. Second Chronicles chapter 20, verse 1. Jehoshaphat was in serious trouble. They had waged war against him by an enemy he could not cope with. By an enemy that was stronger than him. That is why I know that if somebody here this morning, all those enemies who are stronger than you who are fighting you, as a matter of divine necessity, they shall bow before you. They shall bow. They shall bow, 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 they shall bow. In the name of Jesus, let your amen roar like thunder. Second Chronicles chapter 20, verse 1. And it came to pass after this also that the children of Moab, number one, the children of Ammon, number two, and with them other beside the Ammonites. Number three, came against Jehoshaphat to battle. Three in one combined to fight King Jehoshaphat. Verse two, then there came some that told Jehoshaphat, saying, They are coming a great multitude against thee from beyond the sea on this side Syria, and behold, they be in Azontama, which is Engedi. And Jehoshaphat feared, he was afraid, and set himself to seek the Lord. And he proclaimed a fast throughout all Judah. He proclaimed a fast throughout all Judah. Then something happened. Verse 14. Then upon Jehaziel, the son of Zechariah, the son of Benaiah, the son of Jael, the son of Mataniah, a Levite of the sons of Esau, came the spirit of the Lord in the midst of the congregation. And he said, Aki ye all Judah and ye inhabitants of Jerusalem, and thou king Jehoshaphat. Just said the Lord unto you, Be not afraid nor dismayed by the reason of this great multitude. For the battle is not yours, but God's. Verse 17. Ye shall not need to fight in this battle. Set yourself, stand ye still, and see the salvation of the Lord with you, O Judah and Jerusalem. Fear not, nor be dismayed. Tomorrow go out against them, and the Lord will be with you. Then what happened? And Jehoshaphat bowed his head with his face to the ground. And all Judah and the inhabitants of Jerusalem 
and fell before the Lord, worshipping the Lord. And the Levites of the children of the Kohathites and the children of the Korites stood up to praise the Lord God of Israel with a loud voice. Verse 21. And when he had consulted with the people, he appointed singers unto the Lord, and that she praised the beauty of holiness as he went out before the army. And to say, praise the Lord for his mercies endure forever. They put the choir at the war front. The soldiers were marching behind. What a strange battle strategy. Verse 22. And when they began to sing and to praise the Lord, the Lord sent ambushment against the children of Ammon, Moab, Ammon, Ser, which were come against Judah, and they were smitten. For the children of Ammon and Moab stood up against the inhabitants of Mount Seir. These are three groups of people that have come to fight. Two of them, the children of Ammon and Moab, they stood up against those from Mount Seir, utterly to slay and destroy them. And when they had made the ends of the inhabitants of Seir, everyone helped to destroy another. So they eventually now fought themselves, and those that remained they now destroy themselves. I decree that your enemies shall destroy themselves. They shall destroy themselves. They shall destroy themselves. They shall destroy themselves. That is double destruction. They came against Joshua to fight. They ended up fighting themselves. And the ones that remained alive, they faced themselves and fought it out. I have some strange words of prophecy for some people here this morning. I really don't know who they are, but I'm just going to utter the words to those people that are concerned. The Lord said, I should just say to somebody here this morning, that within three months, God will lift you up to where no man can pull you down. The Lord said to someone here that the windows of opportunities to get you into your correct position shall open of their own accord. The Lord said, I should say to somebody here, right now there is a lot of people gathered against you, but there shall be divine intervention. There shall be divine intervention. The last time just somebody here that you should not allow anything to start stopping you now. Because once you allow that thing to stop you, it will never stop. So you have to stop them before they stop you. And the last said, you will stop them before they stop you. I have a word for somebody here. The Lord said you will be delivered from the chains of the past. And then be rescued for the future. I have a word of prophecy for somebody here. The Lord said your life will become an environmental transformer. And you will be a bringer of blessing. Those words are for somebody here this month. I have a word for another person. I don't know who this person is. The Lord said, I will make something out of your nothing. And I will make victory out of your loss. And the Lord said, you shall overtake your enemies. And you shall pursue them. And some people hear this morning, these words are for you. The Lord said, you have had enough of bitter times. God is about to give you a glorious turn around. (laughs) 
And to somebody here, the Lord said, I am eliminating the blockages that have been arresting your blessings. And to somebody here, the Lord said, I should give you this threefold prophecy. So one, I will heal your diseases. <laughs> Two, I will bind your wounds. <laughs> Three, I will refund everything you've lost. This word is for somebody here too. The Lord said, I will accelerate you into a new place. <laughs> and you will experience a marathon of favor. <laughs> a marathon of favor. <laughs> Every form of manipulation, intimidation, Domination against somebody here this morning is broken to pieces. <laughs> and to somebody here, the Lord said, This is your year of fulfillment, your year of good reports. <laughs> and this is for someone too. The Lord said, Very soon, this person. You'll be able to give 90% of your income to God and live abundantly on 10%. <laughs> I don't know whether you had that one properly. You give 90% of the income to God, the 10% you have will be super abundant for you. And to some people here, I have these words for you. The Lord said, you shall bury the enemy assigned to terminate your life. <laughs> Amen. And to all who are gathered here today, I have a word for you. The word says this. Your problems and enemies shall commit suicide. Let your amen roar like thunder. The second chronicles that we're reading, verse 23. For the children of Ammon and Moab stood up against the inhabitants of Monser, utterly to slay and to destroy them. And when they had made an inhabitants of Ser, everyone helped to destroy another. And when Judah came towards the watchtower in the wilderness, they looked unto the multitude. And behold, they were dead bodies falling to the earth. And none escaped. None escaped. Those problems committed suicide. There are certain facts about problems that you must know. Certain facts about problems that you must know. Number one is this. Although it is good to tell our God our problems, but it is always better to tell our problems about our God. Two different things. Although it's good to tell God about your problems, but it's always better to sit that problem down and tell that problem about the power of your God. It is easy to see Goliath. I say, ah, he's so big, I can't fight him. Well, it's another thing to see Goliath. I say, he's so big that anywhere I throw my stone, it will catch him. So that's the first fact about problem you should know. Number two, the whole world is in the gutter of life. But some are looking inside the gutter, while some are looking at the stars. That's the problem. Some are looking inside the gutter there while some are looking at the stars. I pray that you'll be looking at the stars. 
Number three, when you cling to an evil past, when you cling to an evil past, you become unavailable to the present because you are clinging to a dark past. You must make up your mind. And no matter what dark past you have, no matter what dark experiences you've had in the past that have derailed you, you must decide, I am getting out of that problem. Four, there are no big problems, but there are just a lot of little problems joined together. There's no big problem. There's some little problems joined together. These are facts about problems. Five, when confronted with a problem, study the problem. Find the weak spot of the problem and break the problems apart. Study the problem. Find the weak spot of the problem and break the problem apart. Number six. No problem can withstand the assault of sustained prayers. No problem can withstand the assault of sustained prayers. You sustain the prayer. No no break. Sustain the prayer. That's number six part. Number seven. When faced with a problem, direct your anger towards problems and not people. You direct your anger towards problems and not people. That is fact number seven. The last one. Every problem contains within itself, it contains within itself the seed of its own solution. That problem has inside of it the seed of its own solution. Whatever the problem, inside that problem, the seed of its solution is there. That is the last fact I want to discuss. So, meaning that the solution to a problem lies inside the problem itself. Within each problem lies its own seed of destruction. That is, every enemy, no matter how strong, has an unprotected forehead like Goliath. And you just need to detect that unprotected forehead and throw your stone there. Every problem has within it the seed of its own destruction. The answer to the problem of the Red Sea was inside the Red Sea itself. The answer to Goliath was in the Goliath himself. The answer to the fiery furnace where those Hebrew children were thrown was inside that fire itself. The answer was not outside, it was inside the fire. The answer to the lion's den where they threw Daniel was inside that lion den itself. The lion finished the job. They just refused to touch Daniel and Daniel came out and they threw the others in and they ate those ones. The answer to the problem of blind Bartimaeus was within blind Bartimaeus himself. That's why Jesus looked at him and said, Thy faith, thy faith. He didn't say, My anointing, my power. He said, Thy faith has made thee whole. So, by double destruction that we read in Jeremiah, we mean the principle of the enemy destroy themselves. Isaiah chapter 49 verse 25 If you have not memorized that verse, go and memorize, memorize that scripture, go and memorize it. Please open your Bible to Isaiah 49 verse 25 The seed of the destruction of every problem is inside that problem itself. You can command whatever enemy, whatever problem is facing you to commit suicide. To kill itself. Let's see what the Bible says in Isaiah chapter 49 verse 25. But thus said the Lord, even the captives of the mighty shall be taken away. And the prey of the terrible shall be delivered. For I will contend with him that contended with thee and I will save thy children. 26 says, I will feed them that oppress thee with their own flesh and they shall be drunken with their own blood as with sweet wine and all flesh shall know that I the Lord am thy savior and thy redeemer the mighty one of Jacob God can do anything to deliver his children God can utter confusion into the camp of the enemy to deliver his children 
God can use any weapon to rescue his children from bondage. The Almighty can sit the enemy down and say, okay, you are here to drink blood. And I begin to drink your own blood. And they will drink their own blood. The Almighty can set confusion amongst the enemy. And they will fight it out. They will fight it out terribly. The Almighty can make sure that your enemies destroy themselves and that they commit suicide. This is where I'm going to stop speaking this morning. We want to go into some prayers. And these are not gentle prayers. And as we go into these prayers, the ball comes to your court like dry batimus. What are the strategies to make your problems, your enemies commit suicide? Five. Five strategies. Number one. Complete repentance. Complete. Not one leg in, one leg out. Those that the Almighty go all out to fight for are those who go all out to serve Him. You want a total support by the Almighty? Now you go out totally for Him. Totally. No reservation. Everything you have. All to Jesus I surrender. Surrender everything. Complete repentance. That's the first point. Strategy number two. Holy living. You live a life that God will be proud of. And God can boast of you anywhere. Have you seen my daughter? Have you seen my man? Have you seen my boy? Have you seen my girl? The people God boasts of are those who live holy lives. Strategy number three. Sacrificial giving. Do you want to experience financial explosion? The outside sacrificial giving. The giving that will pain you. Believers who understand the workings of the Almighty, they pay more than tithes. Even if you are not going to pay the tithes, you are to tithe any income that comes to your hand. Anything you sell, any sale, you have to tithe it. You have a property you are selling, you must tithe it. You have a farm you are selling, you must tithe it. Don't be unwise to say, well, if I remove this tithe, it won't be enough for what I want to do. That tithe you didn't remove will bring the vora on what you have left. And the, the, the vora can come in any form. Any format. Any format. I remember a man of God who was not paying his tithe. Because he thought, well, if I remove this, if I remove that, what will I have left? The second month he did not pay. His three children in school, they came home without shoes, without bags. They've been stolen. He had to start buying new bags, new shoes. The day those children bought new shoes, new bags to school, all of a sudden, in the school, there was a bell, alarm bell. Every, every student, come out, student, come out. These children were already in class. They removed their shoes. They were relaxed in class. They ran out. The classroom caught fire. Now, bags, books, bags, shoes, gone again. He bought them a second time. So the title did not pay. I'd introduced Devara in another section for him. Sometimes we believers were not clever at all. Don't allow the economy of the world to get into your economy of scripture. God does not operate the economy of the world at all. If you have worked in a place and they give you a gratuity, tight that gratuity. If you don't tight it, what you have you keep it in your hand, you are inviting the borrower. Many people have received gratuity. They are now in poverty even with the gratuity, with the big gratuity they received because the borrower was on it. And many believers, when they make a huge profit, they say, ah, how can I remove this? How can I remove this kind of thing from this? It's too big, it's too big, it's too big. You are introducing the vara to what is left. A woman in this church used to come and pray corridor press with the geo. All of a sudden, from nothing, the Lord took her to somebody. All of a sudden, from somebody who was paying tight of 10, 10 naira, 20 naira, now she could pay tight of 10 million naira. The first time she wrote a check of 5 million and I said, go and give it to the church of God. A bank manager stopped the check and said, Madam, come here. So Madam went to the bank and the manager said, Madam, are you crazy? I said, what? You are giving 5 million naira to a church. Why? Nobody gives that kind of money. 50,000, 20,000. That's what they want. I said, that's why I stopped the check. Now they rewrite it. Rewrite it. The woman said, Sir, you don't understand. You don't understand at all. Where I was coming from and how I arrived at where I am. 
and says, sir, next time I write a check in the name of my church and you stop it, I'm leaving your bank. And now, because of what you've just said now, I'm going to raise it to 10 million. Those are the people who understand what is meant by sacrificial giving. Your tithe protects what you have and opens windows for you. Sacrificial giving. Those who give sacrificially, God will always fight for them anywhere. So, key number one, complete repentance. Key number two, holy living. Key number three, sacrificial giving. Key number four, conclusive praying. Conclusive praying. Kind of prayer. He said, right now, I want to pray this matter unto conclusion. What is conclusive prayer? Conclusive prayer is when you have maybe five problems in your hand. And so you take them one by one. Prayer is line by line, precept upon precept. You take the first one. You now descend on that first one. One hour. You have prayed the same prayer point. Two hours on that one. Three hours. Until the Lord said, okay. Okay. I've had. Then you go to the next one. That's what we call conclusive prayer. Until something happens. You pray until something happens. And last but not the least, violent praises. Praising the Lord. No matter what. It is a tragedy that most of us come to church after the praise worship is over. It's a tragedy that many of us don't even have in books. Many don't even sing praises at home. It is a strategy for your enemies to commit suicide. The Bible says God is glorious in holiness and fearful in praises. Within the next few minutes, we are going to pray some prayers. They are not gentle prayers. They are not kind prayers. They are conclusive prayers. Now, whatever problem it is, whatever the enemy is, let them commit suicide. Let them kill themselves. Let them organize themselves unto death and enter into the camp of desolation. Rise up on your feet now. And all eyes closed. All eyes closed. But if you are here this morning, I am not born again. You have not ascended your life to Jesus. These prayers will not be very helpful to you. But if you are here, you say, Pastor, I see your point. I want to surrender my life to Jesus. Wherever you are, why all eyes are closed, just raise up your right hand and see what I'm going to say after me. Say, Father, in the name of Jesus, I come before you, Lord Jesus. Come into my life. Take control of my life. In Jesus' name, amen. All eyes closed. Now, with the loudest voice you can gather, take any song of praises that the Holy Ghost lays in your heart. And begin to sing it loud and clear to the King of Kings and to the Lord of Lords. Any song of praises and the Holy Ghost lays in your heart. someone here, you ate something, it was a spiritual poison many years ago. That's what is causing trouble in your body. But right there where you are, at the count of seven from here, those things that are swelling in your body and causing stress for you, will jump out and go back to where it came from. 
One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. That's right. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. That person, check your body, check your body now. Check it now, right there where you are. Check it where you are, where you are. And immediately it has disappeared. Run quickly to the front so that the enemy will not put it back. Everybody will now pray like fire and like thunder. This is not a day to joke or to negotiate. A lot of people who will have done so well in life have been disgraced by forces that are battling them. It is time for those forces to battle themselves. It is time for the problems to kill themselves. The destruction of all the problems is inside the problem. You will shout this loud and clear. My problem! Commit suicide! By the power! In the blood of Jesus! Open your mouth and begin to pray! Jesus move in Jesus name we pray that's right the powers that have been sitting on the destiny of your children they have been buried alive now Someone is here this morning. A particular breakthrough will come your way this week. That will disgrace all your past poverty. That's right. That's right. That harassment by the spirit of death and hell is being shifted away from that life. Say, arrow of confusion! Locate my enemies in the name of Jesus. Aha, 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 aha. That's right. Arrows of confusion. Arrows. Look at my enemies. Jesus name we pray Father I pray and as many people as are here this morning an arrow of backwardness and stagnancy have been fired into their destiny let your hand of fire come upon them where they are that's number one that's number two number three Number four, number five, number six, number seven, number eight, number nine, number ten. Ah, ah. 
Where is the Lord God of Elijah? Alright! Can I hear you shouting it loud and clear? Let my enemies destroy themselves! In the name of Jesus! That's right! Jesus. Where is the Lord God of Elijah? Alive. Let my enemies destroy themselves. That's right. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. In Jesus' name we pray. I wish you could see what is happening now. Say, I decree civil war in the camp of my enemies. Sisters, can I hear you shouting this? Is that the loud that the sisters can shout this one yet? I see one the sisters so shout it loud and clear. Let the brothers roar like thunder. Everybody together. In the name of Jesus. That's right. Aha, aha, aha. Decrease of war. In Jesus' name we pray. There are ten sisters here. The enemy has put a chain on your legs, and so you have no marriage proposal at all. The men avoid you like a leper. Right there where you are. The power of God is coming upon you. And the chains upon your legs. They are broken to pieces. That's number one. That's number two. That's number three. Four. That's number five. Six. Seven. Eight. Nine. Something is happening over there. That's right. That's right. That's right. You, this stubborn spirit husband, they have put your wedding rings on her fingers. Let those rings be removed now. Yes, that's number 10. In the name of Jesus. This prayer, if you are afraid, don't pray it. But I recommend you pray. Stubborn, strong man. Of my father's heart. Of my mother's heart. Dead. In the name of Jesus. That's right. In Jesus name we pray. I have a word for somebody over there. The Lord said they have openly threatened to destroy you.
but you shall destroy them. Aha. With fire and thunder in your voice. Shout this loud and clear. Covers from my place of birth. Organized against me. This is a very strong prayer. You have to concentrate. Don't allow your mind to go here and there. Can I hear you shouting this loud and clear? Let your voice roar like thunder. What are you watching for? In the name of Jesus. Deal with the covers. Aha! Aha! This is not a day to negotiate. And we are not here to negotiate. Baka sopota karabo kandayaba. Riba loka posa tende keyabo shente raba kayaba. Mana kantarabo sopola boko yabo shente raba. Aha! 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 Open your mouth, open your mouth. Scatter the covers, scatter the covers. Scatter the covers. Pata sataraka. Rima kaponda kaya bo shente raba. In Jesus name we pray. Wonderful. Wonderful. Problem of envious witchcraft. Kill yourself. As somebody who needs this prayer badly. Can I hear you say it loud and clear? Let your voice be loud and clear. By the power in the blood Jesus, open your mouth and pray. Jesus. Jesus name we pray. Say this the way I'm going to say it. My enemies in the heavens. My enemies on earth. My enemies underneath the earth. Can I hear you say those three things? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Can you say it loud and clear? Uh huh. Let me hear the sisters roaring like lion. Mm-hmm. Brothers, let me hear you roaring like thunder. Hear the word of the Lord. Fight yourself. In the name of Jesus.
They must fight it out. Thank you, Jesus. Let them fight it out. In Jesus' name we pray. We want to celebrate what the Lord has done here today. Violent praises. Amen. The song says, victory is mine. Victory is mine. Victory today is mine. I told Satan, get thee behind. Victory today is mine. Victory is mine. Victory is mine. Victory today, 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 today is mine. I told Satan, get thee behind me. Victory today is mine. Victory is mine. Victory is mine. Victory today is mine. I told Satan, get thee behind me. Victory today is mine. Victory is mine. Victory is mine. Victory is mine. Victory today is mine. I told Satan to get me behind me. Victory today is mine. Victory is mine. Victory is mine. Victory is mine. Victory today is mine. I told Satan to get me behind me. Victory today is mine. Victory is mine. Victory is mine. Victory is mine. Victory today is mine. I don't set up to get me behind me. Victory today is mine. Victory is mine. Victory is mine. Victory today is mine. I don't set up to get me behind me. Victory today is mine. Victory is mine. Victory is mine. Victory today is mine. I told Satan to get me behind me. Victory today is mine. Victory is mine. Victory is mine. Victory today is mine. I told Satan to get me behind me. Victory today is mine. Jesus, 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 Jes
He has done for you here this morning. Begin to worship his holy name for what he has done for you here this morning. What a mighty God we serve. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Push forward your two hands now. You will prophesy. Seven prophecies on your hands. Seven prophecies on your hands. My life will not end in shame. By the power in the blood of Jesus. Professor, upon your hands now. That's right. In Jesus' name we pray. Any power, any power assigned to steal my labor, to steal my labor. Die, 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 die in the name of Jesus. Open your mouth and prophesy. It's assigned to steal your labor. Jesus, name we pray. Say so every witchcraft instrument against my hands backfire in the name of Jesus. That's right. That's right. In Jesus, name we pray. Every trap assigned to catch my hands. Fire in the name of Jesus. Aha. In Jesus' name we pray. Every good thing my hand touches shall prosper in the name of Jesus. Professor, open your hands. In Jesus' name we pray. Set my hand. Become divine battle axe. In the name of Jesus. Open your mouth and pray your hand out. Let my hands become the battle axe of the Almighty. In Jesus' name we pray. The power that promoted Joseph. The power that preferred David. Can you say that loud and clear? Move my hands forward. In the name of Jesus. Open your mouth and declare it. Thank you, Jesus. In Jesus' name we pray. And before you depart from this holy ground now, Pick another song of praises in your mouth and sing it louder than anyone here. To the King of Kings and to the Lord of Lords. One is worthy to be praised. The mighty God in the highest.
Thank you, Jesus. 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 Aha. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. I'm praying for somebody here that the seed of affliction arising from your foundation will be buried completely. In the name of Jesus. <laughs> 